Today I'll be showing you guys how to do this. We're running through a field of instastatic meshes spawned by PCG, and we're able to modify the color of them as we run through. If I jump, we get gaps here. We paint the world to be whatever we want, and you don't have to make it a rainbow. You could absolutely make it a separate color, change the desaturation. This is just modifying the material per instance. Now I'm going to be showing this in 5.6 that just came out, but you should be able to do this in 5.5 and I believe even 5.4. So if you're not up to date on 5.6, don't worry, you should be able to do this as well. So let's get started. As always, we need to turn on the plugin. So we go to edit plugins, search for PCG and turn on the procedural content generation framework, PCG, and restart your engine as needed. In the content browser, I'm going to right click, go to PCG and grab ourselves a new PCG graph. I'm just going to call it PCG underscore rainbow grass. And then before I open it, I'm just going to drag it out over here into the world and just put it in origin for convenience. Now you can use any point setup you already have. For my version, I'm just going to be using a simple point grid. But if you want to, you can use a spline and do it on interior. You can have points that you already created from somewhere else. All of that is fine. You just need points because you just need things spawned. But like I said, in my case, I'm going to use a create points grid. I'm going to make it pretty large by making it something like 5,000 by 5,000 in X and Y. Because I'll be spawning grass, I'll also make the cell size something like 30. Again, only doing X and Y. The coordinate space will be local component. And I'm going to turn on call points outside of volume. So that way, even if we make this too big, it will cut them out. What I mean by that? Well, if I press A on this, you can see there's our points in the world. You can see it here in this brand new data viewport of 5.6. And if I press D to sample it in the world, you can see there's our points and they don't go outside the bounds, but the bounds are bigger than our area. So what I'm going to do is just shrink this in. And as I shrink it in, you'll see that now the points no longer go out, even though the actual setup for this points grid told it to potentially be way bigger than this grid. If I was to turn off call points, outside the volume. You can see just how far they go out. That's why I'm only calling within the volume. So I'll turn that back on. So great, we have our points. Now, because it's gonna be spawning grass, I do wanna randomize it a little bit. So I'm gonna use a transform points node. I'm going to offset them negative 15 on X and Y to 15 on X and Y. I'm also going to rotate them randomly 360 degrees and I'm gonna scale them randomly between 0.5 and one. So we have some nice variation here. Then I'll use a simple select points node, which just filters out some points and I'm gonna keep only 70% of the points by putting ratio on 0.7. So 30% of the points will randomly disappear, giving it a little bit of variation and a little more natural look. So I was to press A here, you could see now in this preview, we have points kind of moved around, rotated, and there's some gaps here and there, and it doesn't feel like it is exactly the same pattern everywhere compared to what it was before, which was a big, dense, perfect setup. So at this point, if we wanted to, right, we could do a static mesh spotter and add a mesh entry and then open up the descriptor in the static mesh. I'm going to search for PCG. If I scroll down, you can see there's PCG fences now, PCG cubes, whole windows, trees, and there's a seedling right here. I want to grab the seedling. And now if we take a look into our world here, right, we have the seedling spawned all over the place, which is great and all, but here's the thing, we need to actually customize the seedling. If I was to press play and run through this, this all works great, everything's good. The problem here is I need to modify the material on this and I need to give it collisions because the seedling in this engine version doesn't have any collisions at all and I don't wanna mess with the one in the engine. So we're gonna be copying over both the actual mesh and the material over so we can modify it for our use case. So on the static mesh spawner, I'm just gonna hit the browse to asset button so I can find this PCG seedling. I'm gonna click and drag it over onto our PCG folder. I'm gonna go copy here. I'm also gonna open it and then open the foliage material that we have here. And it has a lot of stuff here, but don't worry. Our modification is gonna be very simple. We're gonna get navigate to it by hitting the browse to associated asset folder. And just like the other one, I'm going to copy it over. So now we have both of them. I'll go ahead and just rename these for myself. I'll call this PCG 
underscore my seedling 01 and I'll just call it again my foliage 01. So that one I know these are the custom ones. If I open up my seedling, I want to make sure that my foliage is selected here. So I can just plug in my foliage into here and now my new material that I've copied over is the one that is assigned here, which is great. So now what are we going to do? Well, in this new material in my foliage, we are going to modify the foliage color. Now, you don't have to modify the foliage color. You can absolutely just have it affect saturation, emissiveness. You can have it affect anything you want for this demonstration because it is very simple to demonstrate. Well, I'm going to be changing the color as I run through them, as you saw previously. So instead of this foliage color, I'm going to right click and grab ourselves a per instance custom data three vector. So that way we get three options here. You can see per instance custom data zero, one, and two. You can absolutely use per instance custom data regular, and this will allow you to put in the data index here. So if we want to, we can do zero, one, or two separately here. So if we want to just use index zero to let's say up affect desaturation or something else, we can use this one to affect it versus using this is convenient for colors. So instead of foliage color, I'm going to use per instance custom data on this guy. I'm also going to take this color by shift right clicking on it and going and selecting our per instance custom data and shift left clicking on the constant value. And we're just going to paste that color into our default here. And of course, because we copied this over, we want this new one, the my seedling 01, to be the new thing that we're spawning instead of the old seedling. So we're going to swap it out in here as well. And once we've swapped it out, we can take a look. Nothing has changed because we have set the same color. So great. But how do we now customize that custom data? Well, already from PCG, we can customize it. So let's start with that. All we need to do is add an attribute here after select points. We're going to go add attribute. And you want to use the parameter version of add attribute. It's going to go right into static mesh from the output. Now we need to plug in a color into this attribute. So I'm going to right click and use a create attribute. And in this attribute, we're going to change the type to be a vector because a vector is just three values, which is going to be gray for color. And because I want the default color to be exactly the same as this one, what we can do is just copy these values. You can see it has a red at 0 0.007, 0 0.262, and 0 0.084. If I just copy these and place them right in here, just like so, we will get the exact same color. Now, while you don't have to actually match the color, you can do whatever you want. Just know that whatever you had previously in the default of the material, when you're spawning in with BCG, it will overwrite it with this color. So if you wanted to stay what it was by default, just try to match it for yourself. But once we have this, we just plug that into attributes. And on the add attributes, we just need an output target name and just name it color. Because that's what we're modifying. We're just modifying the color. And now to use this information in the static mesh spawner, we have the instance data packer. Now in here, we want to do it by attribute. Data packer by attribute. And we want to add a new attribute selector. And the selector is going to be color, which is the name we added as the attribute. So we put this attribute with this value. And because it is a vector, it knows that the first one's going to be zero, then one, then two, just like here, zero, one, then two. So again, nothing has changed here. Everything looks exactly the same. And to show that it is affecting it, if I change this red channel from, from 0 0.007 to just 0.7. Well, look at that. We have already changed the color of all the instances. So already, if you wanted to, you could absolutely use per instance custom data to just tint things and customize things on the material in your PCG graph by attribute, which is great. But it gets a lot more powerful once we start to try to modify it by instance using something like the character and running around. Now we're almost done with a PCG graph. The last thing we actually want to do is modify the collision of this actual seedling. Because as I mentioned, we need to modify the material and the collision. So I'm going to open up my seedling here. And then if I go up top to collision, you'll see remove collision is blank because it has no collision. So what I'm going to do is just add a box simplify collision to this seedling. So it has some kind of collision. And that's all we really need here. But that does mean we now need to modify the collision on the seedling here. So if I scroll down, there's the collision presets. It says no collision by default. I'm going to change that to custom and open it up. Now, collision enabled is off on no collision by default here. You can go ahead and turn on collision enabled, quarry and physics, or really in our case, we only really need quarry. 
So we're going to turn on to quarry only, no physics collisions. And then down below, I'm going to select ignore on the collision responses for everything. So everything is ignored, but we're going to set visibility to block because we're going to be using the visibility channel going forward. And that is why we have to add the collisions. Now we just need to add the functionality to the player to actually modify this at runtime. You could absolutely add it to something else if you'd like to. You can have an object that moves around your world, updating it. You can just do it randomly from an event. You can have an explosion happen, for example, and you can paint all of the things a certain color or desaturate it or trigger roll precision offset, whatever you'd like. You have the control for it with this. In my case, I'm going to open up the third person character from the template. And then I'm just gonna go over to the right and make myself some room here. I want this to start right away. So I'm gonna right click and search for event begin play. On begin play, we just wanted to activate this. So I'm gonna drag out and go to set timer by function name. Cause it's gonna be simpler for us to use a function cause we don't need any kind of delays here. Now I don't have a function to put in here yet. So let's go ahead and add a new function. And let's call this get overlapping grass. Now that we have this, I'm going to just have it be selected, copy the name, go back to the event graph and paste in the function name in, in here. I'm going to set the time to 0.25 seconds and I'm going to tell it to loop and max once per frame is fine. If there's a lag spike and somehow it tries to trigger it multiple times in a frame, it's fine. We don't need to. It's not going to change the look. So Max once per frame is good. In previous versions, I believe before 5.5, this is not an option, so don't worry about it. You don't need to have it there. What we're going to do is get all of the grass in an area around us. We're going to find them. We're going to find out what their index is, and then we're going to modify the actual instastatic mesh and set custom values for every specific index that we have overlapped. To do that, from the get overlapping grass node, we're going to drag out and search for multi sphere trace by channel. Now by default here, the channel is visibility, which is great because that's what we're going to be using, but we need to tell it where to start from. Now you could absolutely use get actor location and plug that into the start and end and just have a big sphere from the middle of your character. Personally, I prefer to have it from the feet of the character. So that way I know it's a radius around him. Otherwise, because the actual center of your character is in the middle of his body, not at the feet, it will make a sphere from the center, which if you're trying to mass something on the ground, will be harder to judge what that radius should be. So I'm going to take this get actual location. I'm going to drag out and just do a simple subtract node. I'm going to right click on the second node here. I'm going to split it. So we have X, Y, Z separated out. Grab the capsule component, drag it out, and then search for get scaled capsule half height. So that way we know the actual size of the capsule because that is the half size of the character. And we're going to put that into the Z. And this becomes the start and the end. And the last thing on this one, we just need to set the radius. If you forget to change the radius, you just won't see anything because by default it is zero. Let's change it to something like 100 so we can actually see it. And now in our world, if I go ahead and hit play, you could see there's our actual check here and you could see it is finding everything. But now that we are having to check everything, we want to do a simple for each loop. We're going to go through everything that's overlapped, and then we're going to use a break hit result to get the information of what is overlapped. And then I can go from hit component, not hit actor, hit component, drag out and search for cast to instanced static mesh component. We want to cast to it from the hit component. And assuming that it is true, that means we're only grabbing the one spawned by PCG and not just something in the world, unless you've manually placed an in static meshes into the world from somewhere else, of course. We can do something with this. So if it is true, I'm going to right click on this as instant static mesh component and I'm going to promote it to a local variable. I'll just shorten the name to ISMC for instant static mesh component. And I also want to store this hit item. I'm going to right click on hit item, promote to local variable, and I name this hit index. I'm going to store it right after this. Then we can close up this break hit result and just tidy this up because this hit item is the index of the instant mesh component that it has hit. So now to the right here, we can grab our ISMC, the instant mesh component, and then do a set custom data value. And you want to do the regular one, not the one with a message, regular one under instant mesh. And we can plug that in right after the set. The instance index will be the hit index. The custom data index is which one do you want to modify? Now, if you recall, ours is zero, one, and two. 
So zero being the red, one being the green, two being the blue. And the custom data value is what do you want to set it to? So in my case, I'm going to be modifying the red channel to be off if I leave it as is. What I'm going to do is a drag out of the custom data value and just select random float. So we'll just give it a random color in the red channel. I want to do the same thing for the other two channels. So what I'm going to do is just take this. I'm going to duplicate it over here once and then twice. But we need to plug in the instance index now. So I'll grab the hit index and plug that into the instance index here and the instance index here. And make sure to change the custom data index on the second one to one and the third one to two. So at this point, we can see what happens. If I hit play, we have a rainbow. Look at that. If I run around, you can see it is changing colors, but you can see it is changing colors even as I stand still. And we don't really want that. I kind of want it to stay the color once it has set around me. So that is actually very easy to achieve. I'm gonna turn off the debug here on this multi-sphere trace. But before it, before I even do this multi-sphere trace, I'm gonna just move this input right to the left here. And then I'm gonna grab our character movement component. And I'm gonna get the velocity because we're gonna change it so we don't actually move velocity to here, down here, under velocity, get velocity. We're gonna make it so if the character is not moving, then don't do all of this. There's no reason to. So from get velocity, we can search for vector length, which will basically get us the speed at which we're moving. And I'm just going to check that if the speed we're moving is greater than 10, we're effectively at, at least moving a decent amount, then we will do the rest. Otherwise, we will not. So that's all it is. If we're standing still, just don't do anything. We're fine. And now if we try it again, you can see nothing is happening because I haven't moved. But as soon as I stop moving, it is colorful. And as soon as I stop, you can see it has stopped modifying it. Now, if I move just a little bit, you could see that it does change the color on the ones that have been already previously set. But otherwise, if I run around, you could see it is changing the color for everything. And if we want to, we can change the radius of this, of course. We can go in here and just say it is too wide at 100. Let's set it to 50. And now if I run around, you can see I have a far smaller trail that I can just now paint everything. And there we go. We're changing per instance the color and the material of this. So some things you can do with this are you can have a black and white world. As you walk through the area, color returns to it, or the opposite. You can have something pass by, and as it passes by, it can make things darker and gloomier. You have full control over this. The one downside to this that I find personally is the fact you cannot get this value afterwards. Over here, we're using this set custom data value, but unfortunately, there is no get custom data value. You can get the custom primitive data, but not the custom data value that we're actually using in this case. And this is the one that's done per index. So one thing you could do if you, for example, want to know how much of something was painted over, you can first get all of the indexes and store them into a large array with all of the default values. And then when you change this, you have the index. So in that array, you can just use a set element. If I do array, set lm you would have your array that you've stored all that information here and you've plugged in this hit index into this index and you would overwrite it with this random float or you can just overwrite it with a true false whatever it is whether or not something has been modified let's say if you want to use a boolean array and then afterwards you can just look at your array and you'll know how much of it has been modified and potentially to what so it's not a great way of doing it but Unfortunately, again, there's no get, there's only a set. This also would allow you to potentially run through the field, for example, save that information, and then load it later on if you want to maintain the look that you've painted over. Because right now, if I go ahead and just relaunch it, right, it's going to go back to being the default color. As I run around, we can go ahead and change it. It maintains until... I leave. So hopefully now you have some ideas of what to use this for, for your own project. And as always, the project files for this will be available on my Patreon, where you can join these wonderful people here and supporting what I do. It really means a lot. And if you'd like to join the community, the link to the Discord will be down below as always. And if you're looking into more cool, awesome PCG things, check out this video right over here that shows off one of the new awesome 5.6 features.